Welcome to the Allegheny County Library System Video Instruction Series Introduction to Microsoft Word 2010 Lesson 2 Looking at the File tab, the Quick Access Toolbar, the Help button, and more. To open up the File tab, I clicked on it and as you can see there are different options for saving your document, opening a document that you previously created. You can also close your document. Um, I'm going to click the Save As button. So you can see the Save As dialog box would come up. You would choose where to save your document. and then you would add a file name to your document. The last step you would do is you would click the Save button. You click the File tab again. You can also open a document that you previously created. As you can see the Open dialog box has appeared and you could look in your files to see any of the other documents that you may want to open up and you would just keep drilling down until you found the actual document that you needed you would click on the document and then you would click the open button I'm going to cancel out of this dialog box so we can stay on the same Word document uh, to create a new document a, bla a blank like creating a blank sheet of paper you would create click the new button and uh, the first uh, by default the first option is a blank document and then you would click the create button actually create that new document. What is found under the new button though, the new options, are also templates. There are recent templates, sample templates, and then there are the office.com templates that you could download, uh, such as for calendars, certificates, letterhead and invoices, newsletters. Many options under here for creating new documents. As you can see, uh, the office.com templates do connect to Microsoft Office and then you would again keep clicking on the desired subject until you found the document that you needed and with the templates, what is very nice about them or you would choose to download it and then you just replace some of the information in that document with your own information. Also found under the file tab is the print button and as you can see this panel has to do with all the options for orientation, your size, your margin, uh, which of the printers that you may want to use if you are connected to more than one printer. You also have the right panel and you can quickly click through each of the pages of your document before printing them. You also have a slider bar on the bottom right. You can click and drag the slider to enlarge it or decrease the size of your document. You also have the minuses and the pluses again that can 
increase or decrease the size of your document for viewing purposes. You can print all the pages of your document. Again, that is chosen by default. Or you can choose to only print particular pages of your document. If you only needed pages, say, two, oops, let me redo that, print. current page or print a custom range. This is where you would choose um, to just say print pages 2 through 4. I'm going to leave it on print all pages. Um, you would also choose how many copies that you needed printed by using the down, up and down arrows. And if you wanted your copies collated or uncollated. The last step you would choose is to click your print button. And as your document is printing to the selected printer, it just returns back to the main body of your document again. And those options are found under the File tab, the very first tab that you see, which is a blue cover tab. You're going to click on the Home tab, and the next tools I want to cover is what's called the Customized Quick Access Toolbar. As you can see, there's it includes this area, this small area, to the top of the ribbon right above your file and your home tabs. There are several icons located here, your Save icon. This is your Undo and Redo buttons. It also, on uh, my particular ribbon, my particular uh, toolbar, I have the spelling and grammar option on here. And you can customize this toolbar, which is very handy, to the tools that you would use more often. So you don't have to keep returning to a particular tab, such as the File tab, or Insert tab, or a View tab. You could click the down pointing arrow at the end of this quick access toolbar and you could choose the different commands such as open, quick print, or you could remove some of the commands from the toolbar. I'm going to un I'm going to click on the undo and I'm going to click on to, and I'm removing these commands, the redo. And as you can see, the commands are now removed from the toolbar. Or again, you could click it to check it and put it back on the toolbar. So it's very handy to customize this. So these options are always located in the quick access toolbar from now on. You don't have to go to the tabs and search for them. Very handy. Another tool that can be used are the view buttons, which are located down on the status toolbar to the right. These buttons are the same options that you can find under your view tab. The five document views that are found on the left part of the ribbon under the view tab are also found here on the bottom of the status toolbar. You still have your print layout, your full screen reading, your web layout, your outline view, and your draft view. As you can see, the same icons match the same icons up in the ribbon. The 
zoom tools are also found on the status toolbar on the bottom right. And it includes a slider. You click and you drag the slider up and down, back and forth, to increase or decrease your document. Or you can choose to zoom in and out by clicking the minus or the pluses. Another tool you could use, and you can see it counting as you add words and text to your document. You also um, have the word count on the status toolbar. This is clickable. You can click that and it will point out the number of pages in your document, the number of words, characters with and without spaces, paragraphs and lines. If you so want, you can also include um, in that number the text boxes, footnotes, and endnotes if you, all, if you have those in your document. I'm going to click the close button to close that little box out. You can also see you have the page number in this document um, on the status tool more. And you also have um, your proofing error tool. And as you can see, this is saying when I move my cursor over it, no proofing errors. I can click that and you will get a little dialog box up that tells us the spelling and grammar check is complete. I'm going to OK that so that that disappears. The help button is also found above the ribbon. It is this tiny little question mark and I'm going to left click the question for help. And the word help dialog box appears slowly. And as you can see you can do a search for help in the search box and then click search or there are also different subjects such as formatting, spelling, grammar, and thesaurus. If you had questions on how to create and insert a table, you could find that here. Headers and footnotes. I'm going to click tables and show you how this works how to add or delete a table and it would take you to that help topic. You can also use your back and forward buttons to move back one step charts and you would just choose the particular help topic that you needed. To close out this little word help dialog box you just click on the X.